All right, we have six different classifications for synovial joints. And I'm going to list them out for you, and then we're going to go look for some examples. So one type of synovial joint that we have is the hinge joint. The hinge operates like a door hinge, and it allows movement in one plane. It's called a uniaxial joint because of that. We have two other uniaxial joints. These are the planar joint. A planar joint does this kind of movement. A hinge does this kind of movement. And you also have the gliding joint. No, excuse me. The planar is this really the same thing as the gliding. Huh, that was awesome. And then um, let's write that down. My other axial joint, oh, the pivot joint. The pivot joint allows movement like, oh, look at that. There are some joints that those joints all allow movement in one plane. Like if you did a section and then could only move in that line of section, that is a uniaxial joint. Okay, let's write that down. Uniaxial. If you have uniaxial, don't you think we also have biaxial? Oh, you know it's true. Biaxial joints allow movement in two planes. And guess what? We've got two of them. And both of my biaxial joints kind of make me want to cry. Like, I can imagine a uniaxial joint allowing movement in a single plane. I can imagine a multiaxial joint allowing movement in many planes. But this whole biaxial phenomenon, I have, like, what? Really? Okay, but I'm going to tell you what kind they are. You have the saddle joint. Uh-huh. And you have the condylar joint. And ready? The saddle joint is found where your thumb connects to the rest of your hand. So where phalange number one connects to your metacarpals, that is a condylar joint. Excuse me, that's a saddle joint. And the way I remember it is that I need this structure. I need my thumb to get into my saddle and ride my horse. The condylar joint, what? I'll show you a picture of it. Somebody, you know, give me a lesson because I can't even begin to visualize this joint. But you find them here between your phalanges and your metacarpals. So I, it's almost like the same location for your thumb is a saddle, but that location for your fingers is the condylar. I just go, sure. And then our multiaxials. Give me an example. We can go everywhere. These guys are ball and socket. These are ball and socket joints, and your shoulder and your hip are examples of that. Okay, let's go look. Ready? Oh, what do you know? I've got them right here. How great is that? Let's go, oh, look, and you can still see everything. Where on this drawing is my multiaxial joint? Here's my hip joint right here, and you can see that we've got a lot of movement that's possible. Here's my joint, um, the place where the joint, <laughs> ball, socket, there you go. Lots of movements possible there. All right, take a deep breath. Here, yeah, really? Here is my example. This is my thumb. Oh, look, it isn't between. This is between the metacarpal and the carpal at the thumb joint. It's actually the hamate bone, I think, and whatever. It, it doesn't even matter. So it's right here, actually, that is my saddle joint. And it apparently looks like this, which kind of looks saddly to me. All right, that's cool. And then my condylar joints, okay, let's just go down just a tad so that you can see this. My condylar joints, 
whatever. I, I don't know how that ends up like that, but look at the location there. I would imagine you would also find a condylar joint here, 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 her, her. And apparently those, I mean, you can kind of visualize that. You can get motion in two planes, but why that isn't multi-axial, I don't know. Maybe somebody whose brain works in three dimensions better than mine can explain that to me. Look, here is atlas and axis, and that is a pivot joint. That one, I can, I can visualize that one. And then we have our good friend, the hinge, oh, which is my elbow. Don't get your little red things confused because I made the multi-axials red as well. And then my friend, the planar joint, unfortunately, where's that guy? Yeah, right there. What, we're back here again? Please don't do that to me. Can anybody visualize the movement between their carpals? I mean, I'll accept that you can move in there. Why you don't call that a amphiarthrosis? You got me. But those are our types of synovial joints. Synovial joints are one classification of structure, and there's six classifications of structure. Beneath them, there's six types of synovial joints, and all of them are diarthroses. Shall we talk about movements that can happen at synovial joints? You know we should.